This is chapter 13, and section 2 is about ethers. Ethers are compounds that contain an oxygen bridge between two separate carbon chains, either alkyl groups or cycloalkyls or aromatic rings. The compounds themselves don't have a special name ending, but we identify part of the compound, one of the chains, as an alkoxy substituent to the other chain, which is considered the parent chain. So for example, in this compound here, we have an oxygen that is bridging two methyl groups. So we look at one of the methyl groups and the oxygen itself as being a substituent. This is called methoxy, and it's attached to a one carbon chain, so to speak, and so that's methane. So this compound is called methoxymethane. With ethers, again, we're not looking for the common names, so you don't need to memorize any of those. Those are often given parentheses in these slides, but you can just ignore them. You want to be able to identify the parent chain and the alkoxy substituent. In this middle example, we have a methoxy group again, a single carbon bonded through an oxygen bridge, and the uh, chain that it's connected to is an ethyl group, or ethane. So this is methoxyethane. Here we have a methoxy group, but now it's connected to a benzene ring, so it's methoxybenzene. We know that ethers have common names, but we're not interested in learning those, so we're just going to skip the common names altogether. In the IUPAC system, in order to name an ether, you have to be able to identify the alkoxy group as being the smaller alkyl group that's connected through the oxygen atom, or sometimes it would be an aromatic ring, but usually it's an alkyl group attached through an oxygen atom. And then this is a substituent to the longer carbon chain, which we consider to be the base name or the root name of the compound. So in this example down here, we see the oxygen bridge between the two halves. One chain is three carbons long and one chain is just a single carbon. So the longer carbon chain is considered to be the root name that's taken as propane. And the methyl group, which is attached through an oxygen, is modified to become a methoxy prefix. This methoxy group is attached to the first carbon in the propane chain. And so just like any other substituent, we have to give the methoxy group the number to indicate its location. In this case, it's one methoxy propane. Let's look at this example. We're given this organic molecule and it says, give the IUPAC name for the following. And so we can look at this structure and the first thing that we should do is try to identify any important functional groups. Here you can see that this is an ether based on this oxygen atom bridging two separate carbon chains together. On the right hand side, we have a four carbon chain and on the left hand side, we just have a two carbon chain. So the four carbon chain is the longer alkyl group. And so this is going to be the root or the base of the name that we're looking for. And in this case, a four carbon chain is butane. So this is going to be a butane derivative. On the left hand side, we have a two carbon chain, but it's connected through this oxygen atom here. Typically, a two carbon chain would just be called ethyl. But since it's connected through an oxygen, we call it ethoxy. It gets the oxy ending. And so we can call this ethoxy butane, but we're not quite done because we have to recognize that ethoxy is really a substituent. So we need to locate the substituent on the butane ring the same way that we would for anything else. So it's closest to this end, right? It's right on this carbon. So we would start counting at that carbon is one. This would be two, three, four, but we don't need those other numbers. We know now that the ethoxy group is attached to carbon one. And so really this is one ethoxy butane. One of the most common uses of ethers historically has been as anesthetics for medical procedures. So diethyl ether, which is more properly known as ethoxyethane, was usually just called ether. And this was used as a general anesthetic from the early 1800s up till the mid 1900s. Uh, at that point, there were new synthetic uh, anesthetics that were developed that had milder side effects. They didn't produce as much nausea and they were less volatile and flammable. So they uh, gradually replaced the use of just regular ether. But even these new synthetic anesthetics were often based on ether structures. So here you can see halogenated ethers, which have been used as anesthetics since then. Here are a couple more examples of ether structures. So let's try and name these. In this first one, we can see that the ether bridge is here, 
between this methyl or just single carbon chain and this four carbon chain. Recall that the four carbon chain is known as butane and a single carbon connected through an oxygen is really just a methoxy. So this is methoxybutane. However, notice that this time the methoxy group is actually attached to this carbon, which is the second in the butane chain, if you count from the end closest to that substituent. And so it's not just methoxybutane, this is two methoxybutane. We already saw some examples, or most of the examples that we saw were where the alkoxy group is attached to the very end carbon, and so they were all one methoxy or one ethoxy, but it's possible to attach these anywhere. So in this case, it's two methoxybutane. Here we can see the oxygen bridge between what's really a cycloalkane and then a straight chain of three carbons. So the cycloalkane has more carbons in it, so we would take that as the parent name, and then this with one, two, three carbons would be labeled as an alkoxy substituent. With three carbons, it's prop, and so this is known as propoxy. And the main name of this with six carbons is cyclohexane. Remember, it's not benzene. There's no double bonds, alternating double bonds in this ring. It's just a six-membered ring, so it's cyclohexane. Since it's cyclic, we don't need a number for this one because we can put the propoxy group anywhere and we'll get the same compound. So this is just propoxy cyclohexane.